MasterChef's search for its champion has come to an end. From a determined group of 12, one by one, the amateurs have fallen away. Leaving just three exceptional cooks. One of them will become MasterChef Champion 2012. to Red Car on the seaside near Middlesbrough. I was there till I was 12 and that's when we moved down to Ilkley and I've been here ever since. When did you dig these out? <laughs> I, was, I was rooting through the attic. Look at that one. Got an older brother and sister. How old is Dad there? Because his hair's quite thick. Look at that smiley little boy. Oh my God. I did really enjoy school. But once I got to sixth form, really didn't do much. Um, I did the first year, repeated it, then sacked it off. and started plastering pretty much straight away. Never intended to stay in it. The weeks went by. I thought, I don't know what else to do, so I'll, I'll do this. However good you are at any one job, you're gonna be a million times better at it if it's something you want to do. And it's something that you enjoy and you have got a passion for it. And that's how I feel about food. Dad had caught five sea trout. I went, oh, I've got one, Dad. He didn't ever tell anyone about his interest in cooking, and he's gone and done this now all off his own back. He's made it for himself, hasn't he? Yeah. I've got a of his pastoring at my house. You're looking at the wrong brother. <laughs> the only thing that he's ever enjoyed as much has been football and girls. So for him to find something he is this good at, it's just brilliant. I'm so proud. I want to work in the top kitchen. I think that I might be able to one day make a career out of that. It's brilliant. I know that, you know, given the chance, and put me in a kitchen. I'll live there. It's fine. I'm happy. The first time that Tom cooked for us, I realised we had found somebody very special. It's very, very clever. Some of Tom's dishes are, are way out there. It reminds me of a Thai pineapple curry, but in dessert form. I think it's really exciting. The idea of a pasta ravioli filled with something sweet, I think, is absolutely brilliant. If you had that in a restaurant, you would want to write about it. Your ducking fondue. It's small, it's precise, it's elegant. Some of these dishes are breathtaking. Who dreams up these sorts of dishes? Only a top. The competition, it's so tough. This dish smacks of one thing, running out of time. How long, Tom? Um, I'd have said three minutes. You'd be lucky. It's all gone horribly wrong in the kitchen. You ran out of time again, didn't you? It's been really difficult to get to this stage. I've made so many mistakes. Where's the sauce? Criminal. Burn. Well coloured, Greg. Well coloured. That looks like somebody's made a tart and dropped it. I really don't know where to start. It's almost sashimi, this fish. Bugger, Tom. I put the mistakes behind me now and I've learnt from every single one. Really, really good. Well done. <laughs> you know, I'm ten times the better chef I was when I entered the competition. 
must be very, very, very proud. And I don't say that to very many people, I can assure you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. One day I want to have my own Michelin star, closely followed by my second and third. I was born in Hereford. There were three boys, me and my two younger brothers. We used to spend our summers in France on our bikes, chasing insects and animals and collecting fruit in the lanes. It is easy to fall in love with food when you're in France because you're surrounded by it. My father is Japanese. My mum, she went to teach in Japan, and that's how she met my father. They got married and they came, ended up coming back here. <laughs> my mum, she's always loved food. She taught me to cook, she taught my brothers to cook. I left school, and I went to Oxford University, and that's where I met Gemma. We both played hockey, and he was the hockey coach, and he was in the next door college to me. <laughs> I worked away at Gemma and I think our first date I invited her over for a bottle of Puyli Fume, which was, yeah, I mean, it was, well, it was 14 pounds, that's like 12 pints. We started to think about sort of life together and I spent maybe three years in denial before I popped the question. It would mean a massive amount to us as a family if he were to win, because I think this would be the beginning of the next stage in our lives. From the moment Andrew walked through the doors, we realised we had a cook who was technically gifted. I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. The amount of procedure, the method, the technique, the presentation in his dishes, John, is awe-inspiring. That's a very technically gifted chef that's prepared this. Mmm. Macaroons. It's so sharp as well, it's beautiful. It's vibrant, it's exciting, it's fun. It is Spain on a plate. I think this may be the best cooking you've done so far, Andrew. Olive, chocolate and rosemary ice cream. That is genius. <laughs> Andrew, I'm really impressed with this. That's cooking from a professional chef, not an amateur chef. For Michelle Rue Jr. to say that, well, it makes you the whole day. It was uh, just great. You know, you could just keep stuffing them in. That is proper cooking. Lots of ingredients, lots of hard work, on a plate in a sophisticated manner. You've got to continue to deliver at this level, because now we know how good you can truly cook. I wish to try and do as much as I possibly can. In so doing, I ran out of time. You're supposed to be serving in two minutes. Yeah, I'm running behind. OK, and you go and tell them, mate, you're being late. Yeah. I'm running a few minutes late, I'm afraid. Keep on working. Five minutes, the guests are waiting. OK, I'm going. Yeah, okay. come on. Running a bit tight. We're going to give you a little bit of help just to okay. get some jobs done. I wish to try and do as much as I possibly can. And I've just been so guilty of overcomplicating my dishes. This, for me, is a classic example of somebody trying too hard. When you put them all together, it just doesn't work for me. In my mouth now, I've got a floral, sweet, oaty fish biscuit. It's too many flavours for me. It's just not right. But the amount that I've learned in this competition, I feel a massive step closer to cooking professionally. Hot, hot! Tonight, you have gone the full circle. Unbelievable cooking. Really fantastic. That's going to take a long time to sink in. <laughs> I've had the greatest few months of my life ever, and not only was it really brilliant for me, but it will be brilliant for us in the future, I hope so. I 
was born in Southampton and grew up in Southampton. Both parents are from Mauritius. I was 13 when my dad passed away, so I was quite young. It was a sudden thing, so it was a real shock, and my mum had to, you know, just have, she had to just get really strong very, very quickly and look after three kids. When I was 14, we had to choose work experience and I wanted to choose catering. I think my mum wanted me to do something a bit more academic. Me and my husband always said to her, no, you can't do catering. You have to be graduate first because education comes first in our family. At college, I did a degree in psychology and then moved to London when I was about 18. I met Andrea in a bar. <laughs> I told her I was from Italy. She was like, oh, well, I can go knock it from scratch. I was like, oh, well, <laughs> that's good for me. She's caring, passionate, she's funny, she's beautiful. Good girl. Hello. My mum's a brilliant cook. I've learned everything from her. I'm basically her sous chef. She's a very good cook. I won't tell her to her face, but she's... <laughs> yummy, yummy. Have it. My mum and dad came to this country for a reason. They wanted us to do well and be successful. I know that I'm doing something that I genuinely believe in. To follow my dream, do something in food, would mean so much. It's not just me now, it's everyone who supported me along the way. My family, my husband. You know, I want to do everyone proud, not just myself. Chilina sets my taste buds on fire. It's from the Indian Ocean. It's unique to her. John, it's beautiful. The flavours of that dish, I think, are simply stunning. That may well be one of the best desserts I've had ever. I think your chestnut pasta is beautifully made. Absolutely perfect. You're on a roll, Sugar Plum. You've combined skill and real understanding of cooking, but also the marriage of flavours, and so many chefs don't understand that. There's serious cookery skill here. There's a woman who knows what she's doing. Beautifully cooked fish and coriander seeds and cumin. You've come home. <laughs> I'm really, really proud of you. Thank you. Shalina, quite simply, has served me some of the best dishes I've ever eaten on MasterChef, ever. Right, I'm ready to go. The girl is a star. It is actually ridiculous, the challenges we've been put through. You are so clever yeah. to do all oh. this. <laughs> it might be clever or crazy, we don't know which one yet. First time I've made donuts. There you go, see, look at those bad boys. I can't believe I just took some mango tarts and a golf buggy to a blast chiller. Nuts. There's been quite a few low points. It's not very smart looking. It's all a little bit sloppy. Texture's a little bit wet. Your lamb is not cooked. Nowhere near it. I don't know if this feels right. That's not right, is it? But I think I've learnt so much. It's starting to look really good, OK? Perfect. Well done. <laughs> you OK? I would very happily sit in a Michelin star restaurant and pay good money for that. You absolutely nailed it. It's been crazy, but I'd love to win. I'd absolutely love to win. But I'm just nervous. It's scary as hell. <laughs> it's really scary.
it's up there with the biggest days of my life. I'm thinking about what if I win, what if I don't win. All I can do is do my best. Today is massive. I'm well prepared and well practiced. I know what I've got to do. You should be very proud of yourselves. There are now three plates of food between you and the title of MasterChef champion. You have to prove to us that you are the best. Three hours and at the end of this, one champion. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. This is what we've been waiting for for months. The culmination of all the tasks that we've done throughout MasterChef. And I've got to turn out the best food I've ever cooked in my life. Shalina, how exciting is this? Um, it's sickeningly exciting. Uh, I haven't slept for about a week. Um, but yeah, it's just literally the best thing I've ever done. What are you going to cook, Shalina, that's going to put a big smile on our face? My starter is basically my kind of version of a Mauritian octopus salad with brown shrimp jelly, mango and apple vinegar, um, and lots of other sort of flavours going through it. My main is a mutton curry with marinated bone marrow, um, Swiss chard and a green banana pickle. And for dessert, it's going to be a mango cannelloni with lime zest curd through it a coconut and rum blancmange, and a white chocolate and coconut samosa. You have given yourself a huge amount of work to do. Absolutely love these dishes. I think what I would like to happen is when you taste it, you kind of feel that you're sitting on a beach and just having the best time of your life. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to achieve today. What I'm actually cooking are things that my family love but it's on a completely different level. I've waited to do these, particularly for the final as well. These were the dishes I didn't want to show off until the end. Her first course, a Mauritian octopus salad with an apple and mango vinaigrette and a brown shrimp jelly. Marvellous. That's my sort of food. Her risk is the octopus. It can't be chewy and it can't be dry. It is the hardest piece of seafood to cook, so that is the biggest challenge. I just hope it's lovely and succulent. Shalina's main course is a mutton curry green banana pickle and a celebratory rice dish, a birani. Mum, a big piece of old lamb, strong in flavour, quite tough. She has to make sure that's cooked down really well, long and slow, so it falls apart and melts in your mouth. Otherwise, we're just getting up with big, tough bits of lamb. I love a curry, and I've got a feeling I may be tasting the best mutton curry I've ever tasted today. 
But how do you make that look smart? How do you turn that into a MasterChef winning dish? when I think about it. She's got a mango and lime cannelloni. A white chocolate pistachio samosa. And she's got a rum and coconut blanc. I don't think she's just trying to win Marshall. I think she's trying to marry me. But so much can go wrong. The most important thing is that everything is set properly. Blanc not setting me in up with coconut cream. The samosas being all runny rather than being lovely and sticky. Shalina wants us to be sitting on a beach in the sunshine while we're eating her food. I think that's fantastic. Evocative food is the best type of food. It makes you smile. I pray she gets everything done because her menu sounds brilliant. There's no turning back now. There's only going to be one winner today. I'm going to do everything that I can to win this. Finalists, one hour is gone. You've had your first 60 minutes. One more chance to cook for John and Greg. I just want to take it out of their hands, really, and give them the food that I've been sort of aiming for the whole way through and actually execute everything how I want to, and hopefully that'll be enough. How far away are you from a building site now, Tom? I'm never far enough. <laughs> never. Today is massive. Um, you know, I'm a very competitive person. You know, I've, I've always said that I want to win. I feel like today I'm going to peak and hopefully, you know, just give you three plates of food that I'm happy with, and if I do that, then... I'm very confident. What are you cooking for us? I'm doing a sort of Thai-influenced longestein consomme, followed by a ballantine of quail, stuffed with chicken livers, morels, truffles, and Madeira sauce. And for dessert, I'm going to do the rhubarb amuse-bouche that I did for you. Rhubarb spaghetti? Yep. <laughs> with a raspberry twill basket uh, filled with an aerated um, basil panna cotta. Um, and I'm doing some uh, white chocolate and olive oil dressing as a full-on a la carte dessert, as it would be in uh, my restaurant. Do you feel like it could be yours today? I definitely feel like I've got what it takes to win today. I need to beat the other two. Here's the first course. A longer steam consomme and with Thai flavours and coconut noodles. I really honestly cannot wait. That is beautiful. Now, the coconut noodle's going to be the dangerous thing. He is taking a setting agent and he's making with coconut milk thin jelly bits of coconut and dropping them into the consomme itself. His issue is that consomme has to be sparkling and crystal clear. If that consomme is cloudy in any way and those noodles don't work, we're going to have a coconut and longestine soup. Tom's main. I'm almost in heaven. He's got a ballotine of quail that he's stuffing with liver serving with morels, Madeira sauce, and truffles. That's beautiful food. The quail has to be cooked all the way through, but not dry in any part. And that liver stuffing has to be wonderful and sweet, but still hold together and not be grainy. And then his little piece de resistance, ravioli, which is going to be filled with mushrooms and ricotta. 
just hope he gets it absolutely right, because that's the sort of dish you fall in love with. I love the idea of spaghetti of rhubarb. But he's also making a basil panna cotta. And he's also making a raspberry twill. He's not making one dessert. It sounds to me like he's making three. That boy is absolutely going for it. Got to this point, it does make me feel really proud. There's still two in between me and that trophy. It is, for me, all about winning now. Second or third isn't good enough. You are halfway to one of you being our champion. I am enormously up for it. I know what I'm here for. I'm here to win. So far, it's all about, you know, not being eliminated. But today, there's three of us. It's not about not being eliminated. It's about being the best. Three courses. What are you going to cook for us? First course is pork belly with lobster and stra a strawberry salad. Uh, the salad is kohlrabi and nashi pear. Are you erring on the wild side again, Andrew? Yeah, there, there's a few there's a few things in here that are slightly unusual. Right. Okay. Next course. The next course is a, a loin of lamb crusted with uh, dehydrated soybeans, uh, lamb sweetbreads. Uh, there's a broad bean and, and mint foam, and there's uh, roasted aubergine with miso and leeks. Wow. Dessert. Dessert is acorn panna cotta with a milfoy of uh, poached pears and uh, sort of chocolate hazelnut cream Whoa. with toffee popcorn. Andrew, I've got to say, I think your food sounds really, really exciting. Are you, are you going to pull it off today? I really hope so. Now, now that I'm here, uh, now that I'm in the final, it will just be, you know, the, the crowning moment of, of this, this whole journey for me, just to win it. That would be fabulous. <laughs> I'm starting to get to grips with realising that less is more. I just hope that I'll get to grip with it in the final, because I don't want John and Greg to think I've ruined the dish by overcomplicating it. I shouldn't be surprised at Andrew's sense of adventure. I should have expected it. He wants to make an enormous splash. Andrew's first course. Beautiful lobster being cooked and poached, so it's lovely and soft, but not dry. The pork belly melting your mouth, the crackling all crunchy on top. Nashi paired add the sweetness to the pork and cut through the fat. John, it's not an easy job to cook a lobster properly let alone serve with a salad, and that's a salad flavoured with strawberries. Unusual. If Andrew's going to do it in the final of chef, it must work. Mustn't it? Andrew's main course is a loin of lamb coated with soya beans, which have been dried first. Roasted cauliflower sauce. A broad bean and mint foam on the side. He's got to make sure that lamb actually comes out and is proud on the plate. The dessert, I think, is absolutely fantastic. Acorn panna cotta. I've never had one of those. I'm really looking forward to it. Bit of milfoil. Toffee popcorn, absolutely superb. And a sauce made from chocolate and hazelnut. John, that is beautiful. I think it sounds like a dessert that's going to make you smile. 
When they taste my food, I don't want John and Gray to say anything. I want them to taste it, look at each other, and be absolutely speechless. That's, that's what I'm aiming to deliver. There's 30 minutes between you and a MasterChef title. Tom, how much more you got to do? I've got to make my ravioli, cook the quail. I've got dressing, a couple of garnishes to do. I'm very behind on time. I'm trying to pull it back now by doing more than what I wanted to do at once. Tom, he's still got ravioli to do. He's still got to finish up his quail, and he's still got to eat food on his plate. Under control, Andrew. Still loads to do, lots and lots to do. Just give yourself enough time to plate your dishes, huh? At the moment, it's looking like I'll only just get the cooking done at time. I don't want them to run out of time. I want to taste that amazing food. Shalina? Yes? How much more you got to do? Everything's pretty much done now. I just have to start plating up. Good. <laughs> Shalina seems under control. She seems to know what she's doing. We've got just ten minutes. Please. You've got to really start thinking about your plate. Really have to. Honestly, OK. Andrew, you've got to start thinking about your plates, mate. Yeah. Really, 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 really have to. There are some dishes out there I'm desperate to try. They've got to get them up. My heart is the fun pack. You have got just five minutes. Tom, you're first. Tom, these dishes look absolutely incredible. They're beautiful, they're elegant, they're refined, they're sophisticated. They are just absolutely stunning. Tom's starter is a Thai chili and coriander consomme served with langoustines and coconut milk noodles. Wow, wow, wow. Those little coconut noodles are really clever because they taste of just coconut milk. There is that wonderful richness that's coming from the longer scene itself, the real clean crispness that's coming from the consomme, and just the back of your palate, you've got those wonderful faint flavours of Thailand, and I think that is just brilliant. It's just beautiful. Beautiful. I love it.
That's a very, very good consomme. And the Asian flavours in the background is something new to me and it matches the sweetness of that Longestine beautifully. That's elegant, it's smart, and it's a great big kiss off a Longestine, that is. A Longestine that's just been on holiday to Thailand. <laughs> very good. Very, very good. Tom's main is liver-stuffed ballotine of quail topped with crispy chicken tweels, a comfy quail leg, and morellon ricotta-filled ravioli, all served with a beetroot puree, a Madeira jus, and shaved truffle. You just taste the quail and the liver, and then you've got this sort of bounding bit of salty chicken skin on the background. The pasta is beautiful, the sweetness of the onion, the garlic, the Madeira, the smokiness coming from the morels, and then on top of it, a man's dream, a bit of grated truffle. It is beautifully cooked, it's sophisticated, it's skilled, it's balanced. Tom, I'm not allowed to swear, and I wish I could, because it is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, the ballotine of the bird with the liver inside, rich, lovely, cooked beautifully, that's one thing. Cutting open that ravioli and getting a big smash of truffle and the deepness of that morel mushroom and picking up sweetness from the sauce, that is a balancing act that only a real craftsman can do. I'm blown away by what you've achieved there, really am. That is right up there with, with, with the best of them. Thank you. For dessert, Tom has made his spaghetti rhubarb and served it with a dried raspberry twill basket filled with aerated basil panna cotta dressed with white chocolate and olive oil. You have daring things there, like the fizz of that dried fruit inside your basket. You have the real richness coming from the panna cotta. I have one tiny thing which I have a worry about, and that is, is it white chocolate that's sitting on the plate? It's uh, white chocolate and olive oil. White chocolate and olive oil. And the flavour of it is just not, not quite gelling together with the rest of the, the things that are coming together. But a really clever dessert, massive technique. It's a very elegant looking dessert and uh, there's lots of surprises in there as well. Raspberry flavour, there's almost honey flavour coming from that cream. There is a fizz, almost like space dust, dancing on the end of my tongue. But I would like my rhubarb slightly more cooked. Slightly softer. Thank you. Sensational. I've delivered three plates of food today, which aren't perfect, but you know, I've, I'm very close to something that you know I've, I've aimed to achieve, so I'm, I'm happy. Shalina, your turn. I think they look incredible. I think they look beautiful. Thank you very much. Shalina's starter is octopus, served on top of marinated fennel, pickled ginger, sliced baby beetroot and carrots, and concas tomatoes. Served with mango and apple vinegar, brown shrimp jelly, and tobiko, flying fish roe. I think all those wonderful, raw, crisp flavours of the vegetables, the real saltiness come from that wonderful shrimp jelly, which is not even really jelly, it just dissolves in your mouth. The tobiko, that, that wonderful flying fish row running through the back, giving a salty background. The sweetness of mango, the sourness of the apple and the vinegar, and then the real big, strong flavour of that octopus sitting on top. I will have to say that it is absolutely delicious. <laughs> 
Selena, honestly, I want to weep for you. It's so fantastic. <laughs> I really do. I think it's great. <clears throat> you go slightly fruit sharp, you get fresh vegetables, you get saltiness, you get a little bit of a kick. I love it. It's beautiful. It's a plate of sunshine. <laughs> Her main is a mutton curry served with a mustard seed and turmeric marinated bone marrow, a briani rice, Swiss chard roulade stuffed with green banana pickle, and a chili pumpkin quenelle. It just looks stunning. It better taste the same. Inside your pot of curry here, we've got sweet mutton meat that just comes in flavour waves, building as they go. I love bone marrow, but it is a one flavour dimension. Not anymore. What you've got around it tastes a little bit like lemon and a little sharp. And then inside the leaves, we've got something that looks very simple, yet delivers real meatiness. You should be very, very pleased with yourself. You've absolutely nailed it. <laughs> you have, I don't know how many different spices and seasonings in this dish, but I would probably say close on 20. Your mutton got a little bit of a bite to it, but not chewy, it still melts in your mouth and it's wrapped around this almost jam of a curry paste that just is fragrant and delicious. The sweetness coming from your rice at the same time as the heat going with it beautifully. And sitting on the side, a little cigar of iron-rich shard and then again spicing inside. Shalina, it looks fantastic. It tastes fantastic. Honestly, my heart's thumping probably because of the amount of adrenaline for all the chili, but that is beautiful. Shalina's dessert is a mango cannelloni filled with lime curd, a coconut and rum blancmange, a white chocolate creme fraiche and pistachio samosa, and mango jelly squares. Shalina, it's just rounding off a trio of stunning looking plates. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful plates. Oh. A perfect blend of mellow notes and sharper notes. Mellow coconut, mellow chocolate, and then sweeter mango and then sweeter but sharper pineapple and then sharp lime. Perfect, absolutely perfect. It's really, really sweet and there's a reason for it and I know why, because after all that heady spice in your main course, you need something clean and sweet and crisp to be able to clear your palate. It makes me smile, Shalina. It makes me laugh. It makes me feel happy. Absolutely bang on the money. Shalina, thank you. Thank Thanks you. very much. Crikey. Just brilliant. I loved it all. Andrew, your turn. What you have undertaken in just three hours, I think is extraordinary. And I take my hat off to you. For his starter, Andrew has made lobster with caramelized pork belly and crackling, served with a salad of nashi pear, 
kohlrabi and strawberry. Your presentation is fantastic. The wonderful pork with the spike of that black pepper around the outside of it, the crunch of the crackling being really salty, the sweetness of the pear with that lobster is wonderful. But my first mouthful, I felt like I was in Wimbledon at a tennis match and all I could taste was strawberry and it took 30 seconds for that strawberry flavour to disappear. I'm really sorry, I think it actually takes away from the absolute beauty of the dish. I love pork belly. I love the crackling. Wonderful. I love it with the sweetened lobster. I even love the nashi pear. But I don't like the strawberry on there, Andrew. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Andrew's main is loin of lamb, crusted with dehydrated broad bean and miso, served with lamb sweetbreads leeks on top of roasted miso aubergine, cauliflower florets on a garlic puree, and two sauces, a tarragon lamb jus and a broad bean mint foam. There are salty flavours coming from that miso. There is a real sort of woodiness coming from the aubergine, the wonderful sweetness coming from the lamb, and then the crunch that's coming from the outside of those sweetbreads. The cauliflower itself is delicious binding the whole thing together. I think it is a really beautiful looking dish. It is delivering on many, many levels. <laughs> Whichever way you come at this, it's beautiful. It could be the garlic through here or the sweetness of cauliflower the sweetness in the jus, meatiness of lamb. This is Andrew at his absolute best. <laughs> Andrew's dessert is a hazelnut chocolate pear meal fui served with acorn panna cotta, topped with a mocha tuile and toffee popcorn. I know I like desserts, but that's beside the point. That's stunning, Andrew. Look at it. How you haven't got your spoon in your hand already, I don't know. Because it's one of those dishes that I don't actually want to touch. It's so pretty, I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't, want, to, I don't want to smash it up. I love that absolute woodiness coming from that beautifully set panna cotta, creamy and silky. The crunch of the milfoy and those little bits of pear, the hazelnut, the toffee, the popcorn, everything coming together in absolute harmony and it is superb. Spine tingling, superb. I've never before tasted an acorn panna cotta and it's wonderful. It tastes almost like toffee, which matches brilliantly your toffee popcorn. This is fantastic. That milfoy is incredible. The pear is giving juice and a hazelnutty flavour and a little bit of cocoa flavour. Mate, this is exceptionally good, exceptionally brilliant, because it is punching like a heavyweight and dancing like a featherweight. Andrew? You should be very proud, thank you very much. Thanks. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. That is absolutely sensational, sensational. I'm devastated they didn't like strawberries. But I put out what I did today and to get some of the comments, it's just fantastic. I do hit record and I sort of play them back to myself because, you know, it's, it's, it lifts your soul. At the start of today, we knew that you three were incredible cooks. What you've achieved in three hours has been remarkable. But now, our job starts. Thank you very much indeed. Off you go.
well, didn't they, those three? Really well. You go out to a restaurant and eat food like that and you will walk away one very happy person. Now, you and I have to work out from these three who's the champion. Tom? Unbelievable food. Yeah. The first course from Tom, stunning. The consomme is a difficult thing to make. It's a beautiful thing when it's done properly. Majestic, beautiful, clean and crisp. Wonderful. And that quail dish was beautiful. Absolute precision in its flavour, in its texture, in its presentation, an absolute star main course. Decent dessert, nowhere near as magical as the starter and main. White chocolate and olive oil. And the rhubarb slightly undercooked. Mmm, almost there. When you sat in front of John and Greg, it's terrifying. But it was wonderful to hear those comments about my food. It really was. Ah, oh, Shalina. John, incredible. Just wonderful. The starter of octopus, beautiful vegetables, the, the saltiness of that flying fish roe to Biko underneath it was absolutely beautiful with all the fine vegetables. A main course of a mutton curry should not look as beautiful as that. The mutton itself, just having a little bit of a bite, but the jam around the outside of it, the rice with a little sort of horn of chilli pointing up saying, I'm really seriously hot. That main course of that mutton curry, I thought, was sensational. Shalina just made the most fabulous dessert. Mango jelly, the coconut blancmange sitting on the side, the little roll of fresh mango with lime curd through the middle. Brilliant. Breathtakingly brilliant. I think Shalina's food is a restaurant waiting to happen. I just feel really proud of myself. This is as close to perfection that I've been to so far in this competition. It feels incredible. It feels, and it feels amazing. Andrew needs a pat on the back for his endeavour and his bravery, John, because he's always really pushed it. But strawberry does not belong with pork belly, neither does it belong with lobster. All that marvellous cookery skill and then adding a strawberry where it doesn't belong can just ruin things. I liked Andrew's main course. I thought that was Andrew cooking at his best. Lots of different flavours, combinations that actually gelled together. Lamb cooked beautifully, lovely sauces, dancing flavours all over the place. He should be really proud of what he's done. Really proud. I'd walk barefoot over coals for a dessert as good as Andrew served today. I've never had an acorn panna cotta before. Absolutely lovely. Little tiny pearls of pear in that milfoy with the hazelnut and the chocolate. It was a stunning dessert. That was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful food. Today it's about being the best. And today is, is the time when you need to pull things out that, that they haven't seen before. And I've done it. I want it so badly and I, I want them to say my name. But it's all done now, so I've just got to wait. We have three people who came out of their own kitchens, I've got to say, the standard of cooking they've achieved today. So proud of them. Andrew, he's always tried to push the boundaries. He's always been daring. He's always tried to be different. Andrew has persisted with his style. I think that is admirable. I want to win it so badly. Yeah, I really want it. I want to be Master of Champion. I just think what Shalina's done throughout this competition has been outstanding. Shalina came here with sunshine in her heart and the food that she grew up with, and we've just watched it develop into smarter and smarter and sexier food as she's gone on. And it is mind-blowing. Whatever happens today, I'm proud of all three of us, and I know they feel the same way as well. For me, the great thing about Tom is using his imagination with classic technique to produce absolutely beautiful food. Winning will be brilliant. I am competitive. If I did win, it would be a real, real compliment because I know how good these two are. Three cooks who have put everything into this competition. And now we've got that difficult choice. We need to choose one as our champion. 
Do you know who you want? Yeah. I know I want. you have just presented in front of us, we don't believe you can find in, in, in many restaurants. Absolutely e e exceptional. Our Master Chef champion is Shalina. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> I'm just going to take away wonderful memories of Master Chef. It's been brilliant for me. Shalina's one. She deserves it, and I'm, I'm really chuffed for her. That's yours. <laughs> Are you serious? It's the first trophy I've ever got. And red is my favourite colour. <laughs> you are a brilliant, brilliant Master Chef winner. Thank Fantastic. You so much. around he would have just been the proudest person ever <sighs> my mum is going to be so proud of me my family sensational <laughs> <Yeah. Sensation. laughs> Stare at us. Blow bubbles with their gum. 